Hello and welcome to this special episode of Storied San Francisco. I'm your host, Jeff Hunt. This month, we're celebrating small businesses in the city. As part of that promotion, we were able to check in with several past guests of the podcast to see how they've adjusted during quarantine. This episode is our catch-up with Gordon Zito, whom we featured back in Season 1, Episode 42. Gordon is joined by his business partner, Matt Osborne. The two own Glass Key Photo in the Tenderloin. Glass Key is open Monday through Friday, 2 to 4 p.m., for drop-off and pickup service. Here's Matt and Gordon. I actually started in the back of Rookie Ricardo's Records, or actually in the side of Rookie Ricardo's Records. Okay. Um, We were there for, I don't know, two years or so. Then the place next door came up for rent, moved over there. Gordon and um, another partner had a... uh, uh, photo gallery for a while mm-hmm. and then that turned into glass key camera so there's glass key photo for the film and supplies and then glass key camera for the equipment can you guys just let folks know um some of the adjustments you've made how you're how you're kind of operating now basically uh we're pretty much um a pickup and drop off point right now we're not letting people in just because we're we're both of us are not you know super healthy or you know, what not, not youngins. <laughs> so we decided that uh, instead of people in the store, we just do a pick up and drop off. And that's kind of the capacity that we limited ourselves to, even though the city allowed people to walk in at a certain point. Um, you know, we have a, a table set up front so people c- come into the front of the store, but they can't walk through the store and peruse our, our gear and stuff like that. We will bring gear to them, uh, but not in the store. Um, as far as uh, hours, we, we kind of limited our hours. So we're down to Tuesday, uh, Monday through Friday, 2 to 4. We found that extended hours weren't getting more business, so right. we decided to compact it so we can get other things done. So, Right, other things like? Oh, uh, cleaning up. <laughs> <laughs> we have a, a basement that's uh, full of stuff that we don't want, so we've been clean, cleaning that up, which is a, you know, a silver lining, I guess you could say, just because we would never have time to do it. Are you finding good stuff? No. Oh. <laughs> well, well, the good part is that we're finding stuff we don't want and finally clearing it out. Right. So we have more space. Yeah. So that, that, that's a good part. <laughs> exactly. Uh, finding good stuff? No. I, not really, no. So. But it's just creating more space for, for yes. you guys to do something. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it, it gets to a point stuff. where you just have too much stuff. Right. And you don't have the time to clean it out, so it just keeps piling and piling and piling. So, you know, we, we actually have a lot of time to do it now, so we're, we're actually doing it. Okay. And were you originally so we, so when uh, middle of March or whatever were you closed for a while? Did the, did you have to we shut down? We were closed for about a month completely. We closed for uh, yeah probably I don't know a week or two actually, and then well then we were able to do mail order. So yeah. we started doing mail order for a little while okay. until I, I honestly the days all bleed together now. I can't remember when the city allowed us to open the doors, but. Basically, I think we started maybe a week or two after the city allowed it, and then at first it just did not work at all. So we stopped again. <laughs> right. Oh, that was right as the uh, as the protests were happening too, and okay. so because there was a curfew and all that, it was just like, right. nah, this is all getting too confusing. Mm-hmm. Um, so after things calmed down there a bit, we tried again with the you know the two to four, and um, it seems to be you know, doing something, it's working, you know, obviously I'm sure people would like us to be open more and we'd like to be able to be open more, but it's the balance is, is acceptable right now because believe it or not, working in a mask, running around, trying to reinvent your job every few minutes gets totally stressful and by those two hours I'm done. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. So when you were doing mail order, was that through a website or? Yeah. So it, it forced me to finally get all the film and and chemistry and supplies online because I just never did that stuff before. Um, and then for the camera side of the business, we started a, um, not a complete inventory, but a large amount on a, a big cartel site, which was really easy to set up and, you know, work, you know, worked for getting things out there pretty quickly to where we can try and get stuff out there for people to buy. I guess, you know, you, you kind of touched on this, Things are going f- wet. It's like, you know, uh, 
I mean, how, you know, it's that question. How you doing? How we doing? How you doing? Uh, you know, I, I, as far as business wise, it's probably not sustainable in the long run if right. we continue with this. We're about a quarter of what we normally do. So, you know, we're still having income flowing in. Um, we're probably able to pay rent with everything we're doing, but nothing beyond that. Right. right. Uh, I mean, the big benefit is that instead of sitting home, still earning nothing and doing nothing, we're here at least, you know, cleaning up and servicing people who still need film and, you know, at least providing, you know, service to them, like Michelle. Yeah. <laughs> so in that sense, even though we're not making much or anything at all, we're, we're still happy that we're here, still doing stuff and allowed to service our community, so. Right. And um, are, do you guys have any kind of GoFundMe or any kind of fundraiser? No, I You're mean, I feel like them. we don't need it right now. Yeah. And there's so many people that need it more than us right. that, you know, we're, we're not going to, you know, we don't need it right now. We're good. That was Matt Osborne and Gordon Zito. Tune in tomorrow for a quote-unquote regular episode of the podcast. This one with Yuka Ioroi co-owner and beverage manager at Cassava in the Outer Richmond. Music for Storied San Francisco is by Otis McDonald. Photography is by Michelle Kilfeather. The show is hosted and produced by me. Michelle and I have produced more than 120 episodes over the last three years, and you can find them all over at our website, storiedsf.com. We're on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, as well as just about everywhere you can listen to podcasts please subscribe to stay up to date on all the content we publish. And if you have any feedback for us, or you just want to say hi, our email is storiedsf at gmail.com. Thanks for listening. Stay strong, stay safe, and stay healthy. Mm-hmm.